Glory to God. This is Pastor Peter Shazabo, rightly dividing the word of truth. I'm coming again this evening with God's powerful word, and we're going to have a wonderful time in the Holy Ghost. You know, we started a series on prayers uh, on Sunday, the past Sunday, and uh, today we are continuing on our series on prayers. You know, the world in which we live in today, the day and time in which we live in, calls for extraordinary intervention from the Lord. And believers round right about the world, and even non-believers alike, um, unbelievers um, at this time, are even calling for prayers for themselves and, you know, uh, for their loved ones. And um, this uh, really um, brings us to the term prayers. What is prayers really? What is prayers? Um, uh, yesterday and day before yesterday, I actually treated uh, on that in that direction. And one of the um, many definitions of prayers we saw is that prayer is fellowshipping with God the Father through the Spirit. And what a wonderful uh, uh, way to know that we could actually fellowship with the Father through the Holy Spirit. So we had other um, definitions that we gave. So in case, and just in case you uh, didn't join us or you didn't listen to that video, you go back right to my uh, profile, my Facebook profile, and you'll find the videos of the uh, previous days and you can watch and uh, learn a whole lot. But this evening, by the grace of God, we're going to learn much more. Hallelujah. There's so much to learn. So uh, it is time for us to share now and call every other person online. Call your friends, your families, your relatives, your, you know, everyone. Get everyone on board. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good evening, Sister Nikki. Good. So let's begin to share and call everyone on board. As I do uh, the same also, you make sure to also share. And get um, your loved ones and everyone, get them on board because nobody should miss this. Hallelujah. The Lord has so much in stock for us today. So, so much in stock for us. Hallelujah. So ensure, ensure to call everybody. Call everybody without exclusion. Call everybody online and get them to receive what God has in stock for us today. I'm getting really, really excited in my spirit. So ensure to launch watch parties on your Facebook profile and also share, call your friends, call relatives, call everyone because this more than ever, we need to know what prayer is about and how to pray correctly, how to pray effectively and receive results. Because it's, it, it's not just enough to pray, but then it's important to know how to pray uh, uh, prayers that are in line with God's purpose and His will for our lives and receive also results to our prayers. Because after all, that's the whole essence of praying. You pray in order to receive results. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So ensure to share. Get everyone, everyone. I say everyone actually. Get everyone on board. Because nobody should miss out on what the Lord is doing uh, yeah, with us and through us. Hallelujah. So ensure to get everybody online. Get them to join in what the Lord has in stock for us today. Because we'll learn so much, uh, so much revelations um, of the Spirit uh, that will really, really revolutionize our lives and our walk with God. So you don't want to miss this and you don't want any of your loved ones to miss it. So ensure to call everyone quickly. Get them on board. Get everyone. Everyone you know. Everyone in your contact. Get them on board. 
because there's so much who will be receiving by the Spirit of God this evening. Glory to God. So, so much to receive. So, so much to learn. So, so much to be imparted with also. Hallelujah to God. Jesus is Lord. The scripture declares that Jesus Christ yesterday, today, and forever. Yes, he is the same God. He never changed and he is the same God that answers prayers. Just like he did uh, many years ago with the fathers of the faith. Uh, they prayed, they called on his name and he answered prayers when they were in uh, distress, when they were in um, difficult times. As they called on his name, he answered he answered prayers. So today we're going to see exactly how to call on his name. Hallelujah. So ensure, ensure to call everyone on board right now. God bless you, every one of you. I see, um, yeah, happy glory. God bless you. Good evening, my sister. I'm so glad that you are here. So we're going to continue on the series uh, that we started uh, a few days ago, to be precise, uh, on Sunday, to be precise, we're going to continue in this direction because more than ever, we need to know what prayers is about and how to pray correctly, how to pray effectively, and to receive uh, results. Hallelujah. So that's why we're going on this series, and you're going to see scriptural basis, not what Pastor Peter thinks, not what I want to tell you, but what God's word says about prayers and the various kind of prayers, because uh, there are different kinds of prayers. You don't pray um, uh, um, the same prayer for every situation. There are prayers that are meant for specific circumstance and situation so you're going to um through this series be able to know at every given point what kind of prayer you are supposed to pray and how to pray the principles that are involved in making such prayers you'll be knowing that through the word of god not through pastor peter through the word of god and you'll be able to document this and put it to practice so that's why um, we um, advise you and we encourage you to get your Bible and get a notebook. Very important. This is very, very important because you're going to write down some key uh, points, um, revelations that will be coming to you by uh, the Word of God. You're not just going to listen. This is not a television section. Take note. You are actually are being trained in the things of God. You are being trained on how to um, uh, put uh, the, the life of righteousness to, to work in your life and to see results. So you're going to write them down so that um, you could always go back to them. Um, maybe tomorrow, maybe this evening after the teaching, don't take everything that I said because I said it. No, you write it down much more later. You go back with your Bible and you study the word to see if it were so. If what this pastor is saying is according to the will of God or the word of God. Or if he's just saying things from his own head. So don't just take things because I said it. But write it down so that you can cross check it later for yourself. By so doing, you learn, hallelujah, and you are always able to put it to work in your life. So it is very, very important that you get a pen, get a, a don't get a sheet of paper. I say, oh, pastor said we should write it down, then I get a sheet of paper and just write it down. No, because very soon after you are done, that piece of paper, you, you misplace it. And it will make no impact. So get a notebook. Like as we started all through this series, just make sure you write them down in that notebook. It could be a notebook or a jot of some kind that you have it as a document of some kind where you can always make reference to. It's very important, very key for your spiritual growth. And by so doing, you are able to go through them over and over again and put it to work. That's the whole essence. We are not just having a show here. This is not a television show. Take note, there are so many soap operas uh, and shows on television, yes. But you know what? We're not here for entertainment. We are here to, um, you know, um, receive, to receive um, revelational truth 
from God's word so that we can put it to work in our very life. So it's very important. Take note, um, write it down, and ensure to go through it later. Don't just write it down for writing's sake because pastor said to write it. Write it down and ensure to go through it later and put to work what is being taught, uh, what is being shown you from God's word. This is very important. Hallelujah. God bless you, brother. Promise I can see you online already. Hallelujah. So, um, everyone, ensure to let us know where exactly that uh, it is that you're watching us from. Those, my good friends, watching from the UK, let us know if you're watching from Manchester, if you're watching from uh, maybe even Dublin, um, from um, uh, Belfast, wherever, just ensure to let us know. Those watching from London, I've got my family members there, uh, my younger sisters, and also my younger brother. They are there. So um, ensure to register your presence and let us know exactly where you're watching from. Good evening. Good evening, my very big brother and friend Kenneth Odiase. Good evening, sir. I am excited. Anytime I see you, I'm glad. Hallelujah. God bless you and your precious family. Yeah, just keep it up. Uh, continue with us, and I assure you, um, there's a whole lot uh, to receive by the Spirit of God. Good evening, brother Ifai. Good evening to you. I'm so glad that you are here. Sister Nikki Gold is watching us from Padova, great city. Hallelujah. Padova in Italy. So ensure to let us know. Uh, yeah, brother Kenneth Odiase is watching us from Bristol in um, in the United Kingdom. God bless you. Hail is to the United Kingdom. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I'm so glad. The, the, we started a series, like I said, um, from on Sunday, last Sunday that just passed, a series on prayers. That's what every one of us need now. You see, we need to pray. We need to pray. Even a little child knows that. That we need to pray. And a little child knows we need to pray. But the question is, what is prayer? What is prayer? Not many people know this. Some pray amiss. Some complain. And thought they were praying. You know, like, oh God, look at what is happening to me right now. Come and intervene. Oh. You can see all my family are sick right now. No, they complain about the situation. Is that really the way to pray? We want to know answers to that from God's word. We started the series already. On Sunday, I talked about what prayer is. Yesterday, I defined prayers. I, I gave five definitions of prayers, um, which I told you um, I actually got those definitions from Pastor Chris Oyakilome's uh, book, uh, How to Pray Effectively. Um, if you have the time, you can get that book and it will bless you. Uh, I actually have it here. So you can get it and it will bless you. And um, actually, I, I actually uh, got the outline that I'm going to teach on in this series from that book. And it's full of revelation. Amen. However, uh, as the Spirit of God leads also, I would be giving you... Um, uh, teaching you as the Spirit of God leads also. However, I took out some outlines from that book. Hallelujah. Um, good. So, get your Bibles. Get your Bibles. We are going to start very soon. Let me know. Give me feedback to know if the background music is uh, good enough. Um, if it's too high, if it's just right, let me know. So, we can also... Um, regulate it. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, I'm so glad for great things that we are set to receive this evening. So get your Bibles quickly and uh, ensure to let us know where you are watching from. Very important because you are special. You are the very reason why this program holds. And anytime I see you guys online, it does encourage me to do more of the videos and the teachings. Hallelujah. So it's important that you always talk back to me. Don't just watch like you're watching television. I want it to be interactive. 
So when the word comes, because the word will certainly come to you, you will get a word, when, once I'm teaching, you will get a word directed to you, just you, by the Spirit of God. And once you get those words, write amen to it. Write, I receive that. You know, praise God. So let it be interactive so we know you are there also. And also so once in a while, as the Spirit of God leads me, I could um, release words of prophecy and uh, ask you to declare it over yourself and your family. You don't waste time to do that. You write it and declare it over yourself and over your family. Say, Pastor, what does that mean? How does that amount to anything? It has to do a lot with something. Yesterday, remember, we uh, actually uh, re received a very important principle in scriptures uh, where we discussed and saw from God's word that you um, you receive what you say. You get what you say. So, because by you saying it, you activate the forces of heaven to bring the word to pass in your life. So when I say, write this down, declare this word, you make sure you do that because you activating the, the power of God to bring the word to pass in your life. Hallelujah. Yes, brother, I find I have it. It is a blessing to me. Yes, it is a blessing to you. You have the word. It is so. Hallelujah. Good evening, brother Bernard. Good evening. I'm excited that you are here. Hallelujah. Brother Promise is actually watching from Padova in Italy. God bless you. Brother Bernard is watching us from Vicenza in Italy. Vicenza is so special to my heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so special city. Hallelujah. So get your Bibles now. We want to see God's word. Hallelujah. This evening, we're actually treating on another um, kind of prayers. Yesterday, remember, we learned that there are various kinds of prayers. And we saw from Ephesians uh, that um, to pray with all prayers. That's why what we, we saw from Ephesians 6 verse uh, uh, 18 and um, we actually saw that we need to pray with all prayers all prayers from this uh, Ephesians 6 18 to 20 we actually saw that yesterday we need to pray with all prayers so we went further to say there are different kinds of prayers and we learned I actually gave you about eight different kinds of prayers which as we as time goes on we're going to uh, actually um, uh, treat um, 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 in singular form. We're going to see all these kind of prayers and see the principles, scriptural principles that regulate each and every one of these kind of prayers. And let us also know at what moment and time we are supposed to make these prayers because we don't make any all kind of prayers um, um, in any circumstance. They have they are, they are scriptural. Uh, principles that lets us know um, what prayer we are supposed to pray at every given situation or when we are confronted with every any kind of uh, condition so we know exactly what kind of prayer we are supposed to make. God bless you Sister Janet. God bless you. I'm happy that you are here. Hallelujah. Um, yes brother. If I thank you sir. I have been waiting for this you are always in the spirit. Yeah, God bless you. Yeah, <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. So we are going to see now different kinds of prayers. Today, actually, we are treating the prayer of petition. The prayer of petition. Remember yesterday, uh, after I gave you the different kinds of prayers, then we started off by seeing the prayer of faith. So today we are going to see the prayer of petition. One of the striking difference between the prayer of faith and the prayer of petition is that the, why the prayer of faith, why making the prayer of faith, like we saw in Mark 11, 22 to 24, um, Jesus let us know in making the prayer of faith, you believe you receive. Why making the prayers? Which means why you are even in the act of making the prayer, you receive the results. You receive what, you, what it is that you are praying for. And you do that by faith. You receive it while making the prayers. Without doubting in your heart. So, you get results while praying. 
So, um, it therefore means that oftentimes, the prayer of faith, you don't need to repeat it. You don't, it, it, you don't need to go a long time before you receive your, the result. You receive it instantly. Why praying? Therefore, the prayer of faith has to do with those things that pertains to you, that concerns you. Maybe you're sick in your body, so you can proclaim God's word over your life and say, no, by stripes I'm healed, and you receive results. But when it has to do beyond you, when it has to do with a situation that is beyond your personal ability to, um, to regulate or to change, where it does not require just your faith alone to change the conditions. For instance, maybe you have issues to do with the government. You know, they make policies for everybody in, this, in, the, in the country. So it does, not, uh, it does not affect you only. There may be some persons that those policies uh, would be good for and they like it. Why it may not be good for you? So in that um, case, you see, your faith alone cannot change it at once. So in that case, you will need the prayer of petition by setting forth your strong reasons like an argument, like, like a legal argument. Another case could be um, you, you have an open air event to, to a stage and you don't require it to rain on that date. But remember, in that case, also, wow, God bless you, Reverend Father, uh, Alfred Agbonlao, my very, very own brother. I'm so excited you are here, sir. I'm so, so excited you are here. God bless you, sir. Thank you so much. You are praying for us. Hallelujah. I like that. You are a blessing also, Reverend Father. I'm so glad that you are here, man of God. <laughs> Thank you, Reverend Father. Thank you so much. That's my schoolmate and uh, a very, very great man of God. Hallelujah. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. I'm so proud of you too, sir. <laughs> I'm so proud of you, sir. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. You are doing exploit for the kingdom, man of God. I'm so glad for you, man of God. Reverend, I'm so glad for what you're doing for the Lord. And I, I really appreciate that you are here uh, encouraging us this evening. <laughs> God bless you, sir. Um, precious Owo. Sorry if I didn't pronounce that name very well. It's not. I didn't mean to spite you. Keep in, keep, keep in shining in the Lord. More grace of God. Greater exploit, sir. God bless you also. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, sir. <laughs> thank you, uh, Reverend Father. You are a blessing. Thank you so much, sir. You are a blessing, sir. You are a blessing, sir. You are a blessing to thousands of, of souls around the world. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Lord continue to uplift you and do greater exploits with you, sir. Hallelujah. So, we, we, we saw the prayer of faith that's about receiving while you pray. While you are in the very act of praying, you believe you receive and you receive results. Because it has to do with you in person. So the circumstances are about you so you can actually control the circumstances. But when the circumstances are beyond you, for instance, I was giving the, the, the example of you want to do an open air event. And you know, you don't want it to rain on that day. But remember, there are so many persons in that same city, or maybe in your very community, probably who are farmers, and who want rain. Who want it to rain on that day, because maybe they have, they have need for rain on their crops. So in that case, um, you, it, it is not sufficient for you to just declare the word once, and you expect that it won't rain. When, if it were supposed to be the rainy season. You will need at that point, not the prayer of faith, but the prayer of petition. To change the course of nature. To try to alter the course of nature. There must be enough argument. Like, enough strong reason. That the event you want to do is not a selfish one. It must be in line with the will of God. For instance, you want to do a crusade 
to win souls for the Lord. At that point, you can present your argument before God. And sometimes it may not be something you do once. You have to consistently pray, present those arguments, those strong reasons. Other people need rain, you don't need rain at that point. But your argument has to be consistent and um, cogent. It has, to be, it has to be in line with the will of God. Hallelujah. So, we want to start off with um, 1 Timothy 2. 1 Timothy 2 verse 1. Let's see. 1 Timothy 2 verse 1. 1 Timothy 2 verse 1. Hallelujah to God. Kodabra sakayebos. 1 Timothy, how we need to pray. How we need to pray this season. 1 Timothy 2 verse 1. So that scripture reads, it said, I exhort therefore that first of all supplication, take note, supplication, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Verse 2 says, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable uh, life in all godliness and honesty. This was Apostle Paul, by the Spirit, communicating in a letter to Timothy, who was a young pastor of a church. And of course, Timothy was his son in the Lord. So yeah, he was giving instruction as to how to conduct uh, worship, how to conduct prayers um, in the church, public prayers. And yeah, he was teaching Timothy and in extension teaching the church because Timothy was getting this instruction so that he too can pass it on to teach the church. And you know what? What was good for Timothy and the church of that uh, time is good for us now. Because Timothy and the church then, they are in heaven now, they, they don't longer need this uh, for them now. We are the ones who need it to also um, run our race and to uh, be successful in, in, in making sure we enjoy the benefit of uh, our salvation and all that Jesus Christ has accomplished on, on the cross on our behalf. So, Apostle Paul said, he said, first and foremost, I exhort, therefore, first, when he said first, it means it's very important now. It, 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 it has to be a priority. He said, first, supplication. Supplications. That word supplication in the King James uh, um, version actually means petition. It's drawn, it, it, it has the same root word. Supplication also means petition. So today we are seeing the prayer of petition. Hallelujah. And this will, this will lead us to what is, what is a petition? What is a petition? You see, a petition, it's a legal term in a sense. It carries uh, a legal uh, connotation of some kind. A petition could be defined as a solemn entreaty. As a solemn entreaty, a supplication or request appealing to an authority. Take note, a solemn entreaty to entreat means to, to plead with, to plead. A supplication, take note, we're going to that same word King James used, supplication, or a request, appealing to an authority, take note here, yeah, it has to do with a greater uh, authority, one that is outside your personal confines, 
which means now it it does it, 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 the situation is does not have to do with you alone. So you are you are you can't take control of it. So that's why you need a prayer petition now. So you are appealing to an authority or an earnest or humble appeal for something or to someone. So I'm going to take that definition again. A petition could be defined as a solemn entreaty, a supplication or request appealing to an authority or an earnest or humble appeal for something or to someone. So here we see what a petition is. It carries um, the connotation of a, of a legal term because you pleading, just like sometimes you see a, a lawyer will plead the case of the client in court. Plead, say, my Lord. You know, they can plead guilty sometimes and ask for leniency. So this is what we see um, with the term petition. However, um, in this prayer of petition, it has to carry a um, strong reason. It has to convey. In praying this prayer of petition, unlike the prayer of faith, where you just have a desire in a situation that has to do with you, you have a desire. A change you want to effect, then you declare by faith and cause event or circumstances that are relating to you in person, and you you declare by faith that those circumstances they change and they align with your desire. That's in the prayer of faith when it has to do with you alone, when it does not affect others, when it does not affect authorities. Or the policies of government, but when it has to do with the um, uh, the wider society, when it has to do with the force of nature, you trying to co to cause a change in the uh, force of nature or in the policies of government that you know it's not the policy is not specific uh, to you alone. It has to do with a whole um, larger majority. And there were some who actually like those policies, even though maybe you don't like it and you want it changed. For instance, um, you are in a foreign country and uh, you need your papers to be uh, put in regular. Maybe you don't have the document of the land. And there are laws. There are laws that regulate um, foreigners getting documented. Those laws have specific um, uh, procedures you have to go through. And sometimes, like it does exist in most clients, sometimes maybe those laws are not particularly favorable to you, uh, justly or unjustly. Let's say in a situation that is unjust. Yet, you know, there are many citizens in that land who, who like that law, who, who actually voted for the government to continue on that law. But probably yet the law is unjust towards you. It's not something you can just make a prayer of faith over and just declare and make your desires come true. No. In that case, you are dealing with the authorities. You are dealing with the government. You are dealing with their uh, uh, policies that has to do with the wider society. In that case, you don't need to pray a simple prayer of faith. You need to pray a prayer of petition where you set out your strong reasons to the Lord. And in that case, sometimes the prayer may not be a prayer you pray one time. It has to be consistent, sometimes continuous for days, sometimes for weeks, sometimes for months, sometimes it could even be for years. Unlike the prayer of faith, which you pray once, while you are praying, you receive answers because the situation has to do with you. But in this case, that has to do with a greater majority of society, 
Your faith alone cannot just change it overnight. You need to present strong reasons. So let's see quickly. Isaiah 43 verse 26. There's a whole lot I want to teach today. I just pray I'm able to go and cover everything. But then let's let's go. Um, Isaiah 43 verse 26. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. God bless you, brother. Fra Francis Dennis, uh, Prince Francis Dennis, good evening also to you. I'm glad that you are here. God bless you, Sister Josephine, Andrea. God bless you. Hallelujah. So let's quickly see. Um, Isaiah 43, verse 26. Oh, glory to God. Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43, verse 26. Oh, glory to God. Okay, we'll take that now. He said, Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. This was a declaration by the prophet Isaiah. Um, God, of course, speaking through him by the Spirit, letting us know that the Lord, it's not that he forgot about his word. It's not that he, it's not like he, our prayers push him to, to, but you see, the prayer petition always has to do with us praying according to the will of God. This is one of the distinguishing um, uh, factors or principle that distinguish the prayer petition also. It has to do with the will of God. When you make the prayer petition, your prayers has to be according to the will of God. You see, in the prayer of faith, it is your desire most of the time. Yes, it does have to do with the will of God also, but because, you know, you there are certain personal preferences that the Lord has given us right to make in our lives, so you pray according to your desire yet in line with God's will and purpose, of course, but you can make some changes in your life that conforms with your desire. But in the prayer of petition, it, since it has to do with um, uh, the greater society, it has to do with uh, maybe the policies of government, the, um, it has to have it, it that we have fed others. In that case, it, it does not necessarily have to do with your desire. It has to do first and foremost with the overall will of God for maybe that nation, for that generation, for that, um, for, for that group of people, that community of people. The will of God has to be the, uh, the paramount factor in your making that prayer. So when you make the prayer out of selfishness, you won't receive result. Maybe I, I, because I want to go and play football outside and I know it's raining season. Then I say, Lord, I command that this rain will not fall. Because I, I just want to go and play football. I just want to maybe go and just walk around, maybe jog on the street. Then I'm commanding the rain not to fall. For, for my selfish interest. While there are other farmers uh, who, whose life depends on what they sow. God will not just take your word for that. And stop the rain. It has to be. Uh, according to the will of God. That that which you want to go do outside. Is in line with God's overall will. And purpose. For that nation. For that city. For that community. Like maybe preaching the gospel. To bring men and women to salvation. So that they, are, they, are, they, are, they, they receive eternal salvation. Which is the overall will of God. The Bible says God, it, um, God does not will that any perish, but that all will come to repentance. So when I'm making that kind of uh, uh, prayer petition, having a crusade, I could remind the Lord and say, this become my strong reason now. Lord, your will, it is your word that um, you don't will that any perish, but that all come to repentance. So this open air 
crusade that I'm going to do outside will bring men and women to repentance. Therefore, I declare that there will be no rain. And in that case, it will be hard. It will be hard. Sometimes I need to repeat it over and over again. Passionately, heartfelt prayer. And then I'll get results. It may take days, sometimes it may take weeks, it may take um, more, sometimes it could even take years. Hallelujah. Yes, Sister Josephine, hallelujah. God bless you, Sister Nikki. Good, hallelujah to God forever. So, now, the scripture we just read in Isaiah, he said, bring forth your, remind me of the war, of my word. Um, Isaiah 43, 26, he said, put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Yes, it's like a law court now. The Lord is giving us invitation. In making this prayer of petition, you don't just jump into it. You find out God's will from his word. And you begin to plead together with God in prayers. You plead together. That prayer has to be heartfelt. You plead together with him. Hallelujah. So there must be a strong reason. A strong reason. Hallelujah. Now we're going to see. Like I said earlier, you could write if you are writing one of the bullet points now. The prayer has to be according to the will of God. In the prayer of uh, petition, one of the fundamentals is that it must, the prayer must be according to the will of God. Right in the comment section, say the prayer of petition has to be according to the will of God. Right in the comment section. When I make the prayer of petition, it must be in line with the will of God. Over, 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 over raw, maybe for a nation, for a city, it must be in line with the overall will of God. Hallelujah. So that's uh, point number one, principle number one. The prayer must be according to the will of God. Let's quickly see 1 John 5 verse 14. Yeah. Yes, how we need to know the various kind of prayer in the day and age in which we live because we need to pray. Everybody knows that. Everybody's agreed on this fact that you need to pray. I need to pray. But what kind of prayer are we supposed to pray? That's what we are seeing. There are various kinds of prayers. And all, you don't pray all kinds of prayers on every occasion. There are prayers for specific occasion. So yesterday we saw uh, the prayer of faith. Now we're seeing the prayer of petition. So let's quickly see First John. 5, verse 14 and 15. Karebo shakaya. Rebrondo sakate. Brado shakaya. Hallelujah. First John. First John 5, verse 14. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. God bless you, Sister Ability of Moike. The prayer of petition must be in line with the will of the Lord. Yes, 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 you're right. Yes, Brother Dennis, the prayer of petition has to be in line with the will of God. Yes, that's true. You're very correct. So let's see that fact. Uh, let's confirm that, uh, that point, that principle from the scriptures. First John 5. Verse 14 and 15. He said, And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, according to his will, he heareth us. It is our confidence in him that if we ask according to his will, he heareth us. Verse 15. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition. Take note now. It shows that he's dealing with the prayer of petition here. 
is, um, we have the petition that we desire of him. So in verse 15, we saw that this is in reference to the prayer petition. And in verse 14, is letting us know that this prayer petition that we make must be in accordance with the will of God. So um, when he's saying in accordance with the will of God, it does not necessarily mean, uh, uh, it does not necessarily have to do with the subject matter uh, of which you are praying for even though it may have some relations to that. But um, I believe this scripture is actually letting us know um, that it has to do with the way and manner we present our prayers. If the way and manner we pray is in line with the will and purpose of God. You see, praying to the Father in the name of Jesus is actually uh, um, functioning in Jesus' stead. And this is a principle that we see that Jesus um, set in motion, letting us know that this is the will of God when we pray. So, when we see scripture tells us in 1 John 5 verse 14 and 15, that it must, the prayer must be, for it to be uh, the prayer of petition, it must be according to the will of God. So the big question is, what is the will of God? What is the will of God? What is the will of God? Jesus actually introduced to us the will of God in prayers. And I will quickly want us to see John 16. John 16, 23 and 24, then 26. So, we've just established from scripture that the prayer of faith has to be in accordance with the will of God in 1 John 5, verse 14 and 15. Now, what is the will of God? We saw in scriptures, or we are going to see from scriptures now, Jesus showing us the will of God in prayers when we pray. Let us see uh, John chapter 16, verse 23 and 24. I made reference to it already, but I want us to um, establish this from scriptures. You know, it's teaching. I'm not preaching here, so I'm taking time to establish principle upon principle. Scripture says, uh, the Bible said, precept upon precept. It's like when, you, when you're training up children, when they are growing up, you take them to kindergarten, and they are, they are trained in numbers. How to count one, two, three. What are they doing? You don't start teaching them quadratic equation when they are in kindergarten. Yes, they'll get to that point of quadratic equation, but they need to learn precept upon precept, counting one, two, three first. And that takes teaching. Hallelujah. You don't need to start telling them to write a letter to grandma. All they need to start off with is to try to also learn the alphabet, A, B, C, precept upon precept. Then a time will come, where they begin to combine those alphabets and make up words and then write letters. You get that. So that's what we're doing here. So we're taking it easy. We're learning spiritual principles. Hallelujah. So now, um, we're seeing John 16, 23 and 24. Oh, kade brundo kade Jesus Jesus, Kade Brun Kahirabush. You are Lord, yes. Kade Branko Shas Kede Branko Shakaya. Yes, Lord, over all you are. Hallelujah. Kate Brun Sush Kade Bako Sakaya. Man de Brunda Sakaya Rabos. No force of hell can withstand you. Ha ha ha. For you've won the victory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes. I'm praying in tongues and declaring those words that I'm praying in tongues. Hallelujah. By the Spirit. Yes. Um, John 
16. 16, 23. Hallelujah. It reads, he said, And in that day, ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father, sorry, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name. Take note, in my name, he will give it you. Verse 24, hitherto have ye ask nothing in my name. Ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. Yet Jesus was showing a spiritual principle. And let's see verse 26 of that same uh, um, John 16. Verse 26, he said, At that day ye shall ask in my name and I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you. So yet, before Jesus departed the earth, he let his disciples know that a new order was coming. There, there, there was going to be a new spiritual order. While he was with them, they practically looked to him for everything. When they had issues, they ran to him. One time, they they were in the boat and they were traveling in the sea and the Bible tells us there was a storm and the boat was almost capsizing and they ran to the stem of the boat uh, ship where Jesus Christ had, was sleeping and they waked him up. Say, there is no doubt that will perish and Jesus came, rebuked the wind and uh, there was a great calm. Another time, um, there was tax to pay. The tax men came for their tax. And you know what Peter did? Peter ran to Jesus and said, Oh, Jesus, there are some tax men here. They need their money. They need the tax. And Jesus told Peter, he said, Get your hook, your fishing hook. Go to the uh, sea. Cast that hook on the, uh, 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 into the sea. And the first fish that you catch that comes out with the hook, open its mouth. He said, you find the money there. you find the coin there. He said, Pay for me and pay for yourself. And Peter obeyed, went, did as the Lord asked to do. He got the money, paid the tax for, for them. Paid for Jesus and paid for himself. You see, he, when Jesus was alive, he was the one that was answering their prayers in a sense. But it was beginning to get to the time he would be translated that he would leave them. And now he knew that we are going to need certain things at a certain point in time. That we are going to need to pray. So he began to let them know how to pray. And he told them a new order is coming. You will not need to ask me of things anymore. This new order that is coming, you need to ask the father. But you don't need to ask the father just like asking him. You need to ask in my name. That's what Jesus said. So he set a new order on. He set on a new order in my name. And what does it mean to be, uh, what was Jesus saying in my name? It means while you are asking in my name, in the name of Jesus, to the Father, it would be like as though I was the one asking. That's what it means to ask in his name. It's like uh, the ambassador of Nigeria, for instance, to the United States. If the United States has something urgent they want to clarify from the Nigerian government, oftentimes, they may not need to call the president of Nigeria. They need to invite the ambassador and when he goes before the government of the United States, it was as though the president of Nigeria was answering to, uh, their inquiries, giving them feedback, answers. He's standing in the stead of the president. When a, 
a prime minister, uh, the head of state, send an emissary to another nation, they accord that emissary, the messenger, the full respect they would have granted that president or that prime minister, as the case may be, or as the, the head of government. They accord that respect to that man, even though he is not the president, but he has been delegated, given delegated authority. So it's as though the president was the one coming and they have to accord him that, uh, uh, those privileges. So Jesus here was giving us delegated authority to ask in his name. It's like an Anthony who stands for his client in court. Remember, if you have ever been to a lawyer's uh, chambers, um, once you are contracting him to stand um, for you uh, in a case, he gives you a, a document to fill where you actually transfer your right, uh, um, the, the right for him to be your legal representative to him. So you, you practically... Uh, give him the, the the right of Anthony. The, you give him your um, yeah. The, you give him the right to stand as your Anthony. You confound him that right. So when he speaks before the judge, he don't speak in his name. He speaks in your name. Yeah. Sometimes even you may not even need to appear in some kind of cases. In some case. Sometimes you would need to appear, but sometimes you may not need to appear. And your lawyer or your Anthony stands on, uh, 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 in, in your stead and he argues and pleads your case. And yet it will be valid because he's standing for you. So in this case, Jesus was saying, um, it's a legal term here, and that's what the prayer petition is about. That when you pray to the Father, it's a new order. That you need to pray in his name. So remember we saw that uh, in 1 John 5 verse 14 and 15. That the prayer must have to be in line with the will of God. And yet Jesus is showing us the will of God. The new order in making prayers. So it is the will of God not to pray in another name. So in order for me to pray effectively. And in order for me to make the prayer that will get results. I should and I must pray in the name of Jesus in order to have results in every prayer and more so in the prayer of petition. When I stand before the Father, I don't stand in my name. I pray in the name of Jesus. So when scripture says it must, the prayer has to do, uh, uh, has to do and have to go in line according to his will, one of the paramount um, um, things that is the will of God in prayers is that we must pray in the name of Jesus. That's the order, the new order that Jesus set in his name. So that when we declare that prayer in his name, it's as though Jesus is the one making the request. And you see why you get results? Because you didn't pray in your name. You didn't pray in Pastor Peter's name. You prayed in the name of Jesus. Don't you like that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that I could pray. Not in my name, but in the name of Jesus. That's where our confidence comes from. That we could stand and pray and declare and make requests. Not in our name, but in the name of Jesus. So we are so sure that there will be results. Hallelujah. So let's go a bit fast. I don't know. I had so much, so much to teach, but probably I may have to break this in two lessons. Um, I thought I would be able to finish it today, but there is a whole lot to treat on the prayer petition. So let us quickly go uh, further. Um, so you, you see, praying, it, praying to the Father in the name of Jesus, um, you are actually functioning in Jesus' stead. It's as though... Jesus, we are the one making the request. Praying according to the will of God. Now we want to treat the second principle in the prayer of petition. 
The second principle in making the prayer of petition, the prayer has to be earnest, it has to be heartfelt, it has to be continuous. So in the prayer of petition, principle number two, remember the first principle we saw is the prayer has to be according to the will of God. Principle number two, I told you, make sure you get a notebook and write them down. Principle number two, the prayer has to be earnest, heartfelt, continuous prayers. Write that on the comment section. The prayer petition has to be earnest, heartfelt, continuous prayers. Write that in the comment section. The prayer petition has to be earnest, heartfelt, continuous. Write that in the comment section. Hallelujah. Yes, brother, promise. Hallelujah. So, we're going to take um, a scripture to, to establish this fact. Um, no, no, I shouldn't call it fact. I should call it truth. To establish this truth in our hearts. Because it's a truth. The word of God is truth. Hallelujah. Facts are subject to change. Facts are what we see with our optical eyes. And what men do around. Like the COVID-19 virus is a fact. But it's subject to truth. Subject to change. When the truth of God's word come into play. Hallelujah. The truth of God's word never change. So we should um, see this uh, truth to establish it in our heart. In James 5, James 5, verse 16, we're going to see this with the Amplified, um, the Amplified uh, version. I'm going to read with the Amplified. Barusakate barakate babakosha nitareko dabrindo zake dos kayarabaros manta baba kate bros. Kada ye brasata ya bros. Yes, kade bosa kate barretas kayarabaros. Ne bosa te bronda kasoshka de babake. Da barosa kate bros. Ni babaka te bakas koda rabre. In the name of Jesus. Kade bosa kade bos. Nanta ya bababa kada brosa. In the name of Jesus. <sighs> Hallelujah. Yeah, he said, Pastor, what are you saying? I'm praying in tongues. I'm feeling a very strong sense of prayer within me. Hallelujah. And I can't stop it until I, I bust out praying. That's the only way. Hallelujah. When I feel this way, I must pray. I must declare words. I must let it out. So um, that's why we are learning all this. Amen. There are principles. And um, I believe God is also teaching you how to, how to listen to the move of God's spirit in you when he wants you to pray. Hallelujah. James chapter 16, uh, sorry, James chapter 5, verse 16b. James chapter 5. The book of James is in the New Testament. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, Sister Beauty, the prayer petition has to be earnest, um, not honest. It's earnest as in E A. Arrow N uh, E S T. I take that again. It has to be earnest. Earnest E A R O N E S T. It has to be earnest, comma, heartfelt, comma, continuous. It's all one principle. We are, we, are, we are getting this. It's all one principle. So the prayer of a petition has to be earnest. E-A-R-O-N-E-S-T. Has to be earnest, heartfelt. Like you, when you are making the prayer, it has to 
It impresses in your heart. It's something that is dear to your heart. It's not something, you, oh, Father, I need, I need a shoe. You know, you know that kind of prayer is not, it's not. Do you imagine somebody who needs food, like uh, his family needs food. They don't have food at home. They, and they don't have at all. Do you know the way that man will pray that kind of prayer? It will make meaning to his heart. It will be heartfelt. Unlike somebody who have 12 shoes at home. Then he saw his friend just wore a new shoe past him and he likes it. Hey, Father, I like that kind of shoe. Father, give me that kind of shoe. You know, that kind of prayer is not heartfelt. It's not something that is urgent. It's, it doesn't come from your heart. You just like it. That kind of prayer is not heartfelt. But it has to be heartfelt. Something that you are praying is coming out from your depth. Hallelujah. So, earnest, heartfelt, and continuous. You don't stop until there is a change. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <sighs> James chapter 5. Verse 16, we will major on the B part. I'm going to read with the Amplified Version so it will give us some um, PowerPoints to, to, to analyze and, and uh, really get the point. So you may read from the um, King James, but the Amplified only amplifies it. It's the same principle, but the Amplified actually gives you um, a breakdown. So that's why it's called Amplified. It's, but it's essentially the same principle. So, hallelujah. James 5, verse 16. It's a confess to one another, therefore... Your thoughts, your sleeps, your false steps, your offenses, your sins. And pray also for one another that you may be healed and restored to a spiritual tone of mind and heart. This is the point we are going now. The earnest Heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. I like the amplified. So you see, the the first part we see of um, James five sixteen. It's, uh, it's important, but that's not where we are going to major on today. He said, confess your fault one, therefore one to another, letting us know that we need, when we offend each other, we need to confess. If I wrong you, it does not mean I must go and be confessing my sins to everybody in the street if I erred against God. That's not what this scripture is saying. This scripture is actually saying, in the case that I wronged you, I did something wrong to you, I should be able to ask you for forgiveness and own up to what I've done wrong. That's what it means. It does not mean anytime maybe I made a mistake, I erred against God that I must come and tell you that uh, I want to confess my fault because scripture says confess uh, fault one to another. That's not the sense in which the scripture is saying this. It means when in the case that I wronged you, I did something wrong to you, I should confess that fault to you. And ask for your forgiveness. That's what it means. We will have time to go through that principle um, in future by the grace of God as the Lord gives us uh, the possibilities. But what we're going to major on today is the B part of this verse 16. And the B part is that in the, um, in the, with the Amplified, he said the earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man. Take note. Of a righteous man. Thank God. Our righteousness is not of ourselves. Uh, our righteousness is of him. 
Therefore, our scripture says we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So we've been given the gift of righteousness when we got born again. That's why you need to be born again. If you are not born again, this may not make so much sense to you. So you could do that today. Amen. Because from that moment onward, you become the righteousness of Christ, of God in Christ. Which means you take on the righteousness that he confers on you in exchange for your sin. What a, what a privilege we have as children of God. Hallelujah. That we have righteousness. And yet, uh, which is the righteousness of Christ. And yet the scripture is letting us know that the prayer of a righteous man. You see, we are righteousness come from now. We are righteous. Not because we, we did anything special. But he made us righteous men and women. Hallelujah. So here he said, the prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous, take note of that, of, of that word, makes tremendous power available. Wow. Tremendous. It makes it available. Dynamic in it working. So when we make the prayer of petition, we make it earnestly we make it from our hearts and we continue in it. And you know what? It releases tremendous power to change the course of, 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 of destiny or history or of your whole society. So take note this very key um, principle. It said, an earnest prayer is specific. Take note here. An earnest prayer is specific in purpose, filled with zeal. Take note. That's why it's earnest. It's filled with zeal, not a prayer you make offhand. Father, tomorrow, I would want it not to rain. Father, that's, that's not zeal. Filled with zeal and fervency. Must be fervent. That's what makes it earnest. Fervency and marked by a deep feeling of conviction. That's why it's at fact now. That prayer must be marked by a deep feeling of conviction. You are convinced. Remember, we said earlier the prayer of petition is a legal term. So you are convinced in what you are doing. You are convinced with a strong argument that you are presenting before the Lord. The, you remember we read in Isaiah, he said, uh, 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 bring forth your strong reasons. Come, let us plead together. So you must have a strong reason that must have convinced you that he's making the prayer before you start making it. The prayer must convince you first. It must be, you must be convinced in your spirit before you start even making it. So, as you are convinced that this is the will of God, this is the plan of God, this is the purpose of God, then you set it up before the Lord. You bring out your strong reasons before the Lord. And when you're making that prayer, it is earnest, with zeal. You pray for the salvation of a whole city. You pray for the salvation of a nation. You know it's the will of God. You are convinced about it. Father, for that reason, it's not going to rain. You are convinced. I'm going to have this crusade where the word of God will be preached. You are convinced in your spirit. Then you bring it out to the Lord. Table it before the Lord. He said, come, let us plead together. In Isaiah, we read earlier. Then you, it, it's, it's, it's not something you pray at one time and because you saw it didn't happen, you give up. You don't give up until it changes. The situation changes. The, the, um, there's a policy of government that uh, is making you to stay undocumented in the country where you dwell and you know that that policy is actually against the, the, the divine plan of God. Maybe that policy targets uh, a certain uh, 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 um, group of people in that country and try to deprive them the privilege of having those uh, documents, maybe the green card or the permit, or, uh, the permit of stay or something. And you know that's not God's will. 
And you know that's discriminatory. And God are, are like justice. But for you to change it, it's not something you pray at once, maybe the prayer of faith. It's something you need to bring strong petition to the Lord. And sometimes you may make that prayer for days. Things will st may still remain the same, but you are not going to give up. You may make, need to make the prayer for weeks, for months, sometimes even for years. To change that policy of government. Because it has to do with the greater society. Not just you alone. So, you continue. It may seem as if nothing is working. It's the principle is, the, the policy is not being changed. But you stay continuous. Continue in that prayer. That's why it's earnest. That's why it's, uh, uh, that's why it's uh, heartfelt. Con you are convinced about it. You're not going to back out then it has to be continuous. You are not giving up until there is a change. Hallelujah. So we begin to see the principles involved in the prayer of petition now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, in the prayer of petition, it must be something that it has to do with a situation that touches your heart. And as you pray, you pray from your heart. You have to be persistent, not giving up until you see a change. And you have to continue. You have to continue. Hallelujah. Kabo shatakas kede brandos kote brandayaka. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. You know what? Maybe we'll end. Um, we will end this part here. I don't want to keep you for a long, long time. But I still have a whole lot to teach. So we'll be taking part two of the prayer of petition tomorrow. By the grace of God, we'll be taking part two. Let's, let's break it here. Hallelujah. But I hope you're beginning to see um, the, the very essential principles that are involved in making the prayer of petition. And you have seen the difference between the prayer of petition and the prayer of faith that we treated yesterday. If you didn't follow that teaching of yesterday, go back to my page and watch the videos of uh, Sunday and um, Monday, which is yesterday. You see the principles that are involved in the prayer of faith. And here we've seen uh, different principles that are involved in the prayer of petition. Tomorrow, uh, by the grace of God, I'm going to give you a concrete example of a person who made the prayer of petition and how they made it. Um, I should mention it. I, I, I'm going to show you the case of Elijah, how he made the prayer of petition when the policy of the government of the day, um, the king uh, Ahab, made a policy that um, encouraged idol worshipping in, in the nation of uh, where he was living. And the prophet of God, um, Elijah, knew that this policy was against God and against his will. And Elijah prayed the prayer of petition and he held the government to a standstill until they came and asked him to please re reverse the prayer. And he made that same prayer again and he turned the situation aright. They repented and uh, all the prophets of Ba were judged. Um, so I'm going to... We're going to analyze the prayer petition that um, that um, Elijah made and the results that he got. And if time permits, I'm also going to give another example of the widow woman who um, made the prayer petition and persisted until she got results. So, so that you know exactly how to um, uh, pray the prayer petition and on one when um, on on what occasion you need to step up and make the prayer of petition and see results. If you know you've been blessed by this, just write, say, Pastor, I've been so blessed. Say, write, Pastor, I've been so blessed with the uh, teaching on the prayer of petition. Hallelujah. So it is my prayer for you today that the grace of God is upon you. The ability of the Spirit is being vested on you. Grace 
grace to step up. Even in this time of great need, grace to step up to the challenges of this generation that we are facing. Grace to step up and make prayers for your city, for your nation, that we impart on the policies of government to make the right decisions in your nation, in your city, that will be in line with the will of God and purpose of God for your life, for your land, for your nation, so that you will begin and continue to see the blessings of God and that you enjoy the privileges of being a child of God. That grace is vested upon you right now. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. The abilities of the Spirit is made manifest in your life. From henceforth, you will not be weak in prayers, but that grace from on high, that abilities, the empowerment by the Spirit is upon you. Grace locating you. Grace locating your family. That from henceforth, you will become a champion in prayers. You will champion the cause of prayers in your city, in your family, in your church, in your nation. And you begin to and continue to see great results. In the name of Jesus, you that sick in your bodies, I rebuke that sickness in the name of Jesus. I rebuke that virus, whether it's COVID-19, whether you've been tested positive for the virus. I rebuke that virus in the name of Jesus. And I command that virus to loosen its grip from your body. Be healed. In the name of Jesus, from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, you are made every with whole. Your family is whole from the, from the pandemic. The pandemic cannot have any grip. And if it has head sway in your family before now, by the power and authority in the name of Jesus, I cut off the power of the virus from your life, from your home, from your family. Be healed. Your home healed. Your family healed. In the name of Jesus, you that have been depressed. I rebuke that cloud of depression, that dark cloud of depression that had settled in your family and in your home. I rebuke that dark cloud from your home and from your life. In the name of Jesus, hope has come to you. In the name of Jesus, and faith is arising. Yes, faith is arising in your heart right now that you live. You cannot die and you will not die, but you live to declare the works of God. For he sent forth his word and his word healed you and delivered you from the destruction. Yes, God's word is coming to you today. Coming to your family today. Coming to your community today. today. Coming to your nation today. And the word of God heals you and delivers you from every destruction of hell. Be healed. Be encouraged. Life is taking a hold of you for the Lord is your shepherd. You cannot want. Hallelujah. He is with you even on to the end of the age. Hallelujah. God bless you. And if you've not yet made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, this is an opportunity to do so now. Because scripture lets us know that uh, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. In Acts of the Apostles 2 verse 21. And in Romans 10 from verse 9 and 10, he said, with the heart man believe and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You want to do that right now because all that we have seen today in scriptures on the prayer of petition may make no sense to you or accept that you have made the very first move of um, declaring and announcing and confessing Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And you could do that now. So you want to make the prayer after me, believing in your heart. You say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you just as I am, a sinner. But I've seen in your word that you sent Jesus Christ to die for my sins and for the sins of the world. Therefore, today, I accept the perfect sacrifice of Jesus on my behalf. I confess Jesus is the Lord of my life from answered. From this day forward, I am no longer for the devil and his kingdom. I am now a child of God. I've been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of your dear son. If you just made that prayers from the depth of your heart, you have born again. Welcome to the family of God. I want to uh, encourage you to look for a Bible-believing church in the city where you dwell so that you will be groomed up and nourished in the things of God. And if you live anywhere around Padova in Italy, maybe you live in other nearby cities like uh, Ferrara, Rovigo, Vicenza, Mestre, Venice, I want to invite you to come worship with us at Healing Grace Christian Assembly behind the Padova train station. 
On the Sundays, our Sunday school starts by 10 in the morning, while the main service starts by 11. On Tuesdays, we have our prayer meetings from 6.30 in the evening to 8 p.m. Um, you will be blessed coming to worship with us, and we'll be glad to have you, of course. Uh, however, as the lockdown lasts, um, I come to your way every evening here on Facebook Live to share God's word with you by 6 uh, in the evening. So ensure to join us, especially in, on this series on prayers. We all need to pray, but we know we need to know how to pray, um, what prayer is, and uh, various principles that are involved. So we know what prayer to pray at every time. So ensure to join us tomorrow evening by 6 o'clock. Call all your friends and neighbors and let them join also. Meanwhile, though we're going offline now, and sure to share this uh, today's teaching with all your friends. It will bless them and it will set them on a new strata, on a new uh, uh, order in life, so that they can pray to get re- and get results. Hallelujah! So God bless you. I'm so glad to have shared God's word with you. I remember Pastor Peter as Shazabo of Healing Grace Christian Assembly here in Padova, Italy. God bless you. Um, let's see those who have been online. God bless you, Sister Beauty. God bless you. So, so glad that you are here, that you stayed. Uh, Brother Promise, God bless you. So glad. Brother uh, Bernard, God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Yes, uh, Sister Beauty, heartfelt, continuous uh, prayers. Yes, thanks. God bless you. Yes, Brother Promise, earnest, heartfelt, and continuous. Yes, that's what we have learned today. Hallelujah. And you know what? It is important that every one of us put these principles to work in our life. Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. I promise said hallelujah. Yes, brother, uh, Sister Nikki Gold, I have been blessed. God bless you. I'm so glad to know that. Hallelujah. Brother Bernard, you've been blessed. Hallelujah. Yeah, Sister uh, Beauty, Ability of Moeke, yes, you've been blessed. Hallelujah. God bless you. Hallelujah. Every one of you, I really appreciate the fact that you have stayed here and uh, kept watching and ensure, make sure to share this important principle, which we really need for this day and age. Share it with your friends, relatives, and loved ones. God bless you. I love you so much. Love you. So, see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.